Hello everyone, Melissa Prophet here, Education and Communication Specialist for the Warren County Soil and Water Conservation District. This week is National Wildlife Week, so I thought it would be fun to do a lesson segment on one of the hardest working animals in our wildlife kingdom. That's right, it's the wonderful earthworm. Now here in Ohio, we actually have several different species of earthworms. Some are of European descent, some are native. But as the name implies, an earthworm is the worm we find in the ground, living in the soil underneath our feet. Now the earthworm is doing a lot of hard work while it's underneath the soil down there. But when we look at an earthworm, the common earthworm, well, if you look, it doesn't really look much like you or me. When we look at this worm, we do not see external eyes or ears. And well, when you're an earthworm living underneath the ground, there's not a lot of light, a lot of things to see or hear down there. However, an earthworm certainly still knows what's going on around it. Along the body of an earthworm, we find these bristle-like structures called setae. These little setae bristles work kind of like the whiskers on a cat. If you've ever seen the whiskers on a cat moving and feeling around, these setae give information back to the earthworm about vibrations in the ground and what's going on around it. But even more than that, it helps it to move through the soil. If you've ever played a sport where you have to wear cleats on your feet, those cleats help to grip the soil as you run. These bristle structures on the earthworm help it to move through the ground. Because moving through the soil is one of the most important jobs an earthworm has. Because as the earthworm moves, it creates tunnels in space that allow vital parts of soil like air and water to exist in healthy soil. Now when we look back at this earthworm, well, it doesn't have eyes or ears, but it certainly has a mouth. All living things need to eat, and the earthworm is no exception. Now while they have a mouth, they do not have beautiful teeth. When an earthworm is underground, it opens its mouth and it swallows soil. It's also then so swallowing decayed leaves and things like that that have fallen to the soil. As it digests these, it's taking nutrients, but some of those nutrients are passed out of the worm as what's called a casting, worm poop. This is also putting nutrients back into the soil so that as new things grow, they have access to those nutrients and the cycle continues. Now, even though the worm doesn't have teeth, it does have a body part similar to a bird called a crop. Now this crop contains small stones that the earthworm has swallowed from the soil. And as the earthworm moves, these stones help to grind up its food. Now, if we look closely at this picture again, what you will notice is we see body parts, but we do not see a skeleton. Earthworms do not have a skeleton. They do, however, have lots of muscles. They have two types of muscles, a round muscle and a long muscle. And when we watch an earthworm move, it kind of stretches like an accordion. It gets small and long, small and long, as it's moving around. In looking at the body of the earthworm, we can see the brain, the mouth, the multiple hearts that the earthworm has, the crop and the gizzard, our clitellum that produces our eggs, a simple intestine, and then of course the end where our castings would come out. Now, I have brought some earthworms with me to look at. Here I have what are called red wiggler earthworms. These are not native to Ohio, but they are excellent for compost worms as they eat very quickly. Now, I'm going to gently pick up our worm so that we can see it. Looks like I have two friends here. You can see that first there's a difference in size. Just as other animals grow and get bigger with age, so too does the earthworm. A baby earthworm is called a wormlet, and wormlets hatch from eggs that are very, very small. This is the size of an earthworm egg, and from it, several different wormlets can hatch at a time. Now also on my plate here you see some worm food, we have got some grapes, we have some paper and sticks, eggshells. These are all organic or once living materials. Paper comes from a tree, the tree was once alive. Now as we get closer looking at our earthworms, on this particular earthworm you can see this body part right here 
called the clitellum. The clitellum is the part of the body where the eggs are produced. Now, as you see this earthworm searching, that's one way we can tell the difference from the head to the tail of the earthworm. On larger worms that have the clitellum, the head is closer to the clitellum, but also worms typically move in a forward direction. Now, as you can see, this earthworm is going between my fingers. He is seeking the darkness. Although earthworms do not have eyes, they do have photoreceptors in their skin that can feel the light. And when you're an earthworm, light is sunlight. And sunlight can dry out an earthworm. Earthworms do not have lungs the way that we do. Instead, oxygen passes across their skin, but to do that, they need to be moist. This is one of the reasons that earthworms produce a slime on their body. Not only does it help them to move through the soil, but it helps them to be able to breathe. You might notice on a rainy day, we see earthworms come up to the surface. Well, scientists used to think that this was because they might drown, but now we know it's much more likely that it's because they can't. It's the time they can come to the Earth's surface and maintain that moisture to be able to breathe. Now, as we see these worms moving around, you can notice that accordion-like movement where they get long and then short, long and then short. Earthworms really are fascinating animals. They're a food source for other animals in nature, such as birds and moles that live under the ground with them. But they're doing so much hard work for people as well. As they improve the health of the soil, they allow plants like crops to grow, which is a food source for not only you and I, but many animals in the animal kingdom. So during Wildlife Week, I would like to say thank you to our friend, the earthworm. I hope you guys have enjoyed this segment and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.